G'day Blade Dickheads Vaping Bogan back again for another Dinky Die review. Hope you're all having a fucking perler. We've got a new version of a very popular RDA from a little while back. The Drop version 1.5 from Digi Flavor, and this time it's just Digi Flavor on their own. Originally it was a collaboration between the Vapor Chronicles and Digi Flavor. He is since uh, no longer involved with uh, the project, but apparently this new version does have his blessings. They haven't just gone and done it without asking him, which is uh, kind of nice for a Chinese company. Sometimes they just kind of do whatever they fucking want when people step away from the industry. I've got it sitting atop the Mandalorian from RCM or Russian Custom Mods. This is not the drip tip that it comes with either. This one is from District 5. It's one of their one drip tips. Got a bit of matchy match action with the uh, blue top cap drip tip and gold and blue on the fucking battery wrap on the mod. I think this comes together quite fucking nicely. So the drop was pretty fucking popular uh, a couple years ago, maybe even a few years ago now. It's been a little while. It did actually follow on and do a, a collaboration between the Dead Rabbit and the drop, which they called the Drop Dead. Uh, so it's been around and uh, a lot of people still enjoy their drops from what I hear. And uh, this is uh, not all that far away from the original. Still has this sort of vertical style airflow, uh, the raised up posts, uh, pretty much the same as the original. They've kind of just changed up the airflow and the uh, look of it. We're going to do a little comparison between the old one and the new one. I've got a couple of uh, aliens in here coming in about 0.1 ohms. Really nice smooth airflow, like the first one, maybe a touch smoother than the original. Lots of great fucking flavor as well, and as you can see, tons of fucking clouds. We're gonna get down and fucking dirty with it, but before we can do any of that, as always, let's crack a fucking beer. Got a nice big Scottish beer from Fast Brewery. This is Very Berry, a berry sour ale. This tart ale is packed with a super group of seasonal berries with sweet notes of raspberry, blackberry, and black currant that balance off a puckering sour punch. This is a beer with the raw levels turned up to 11. So let's get jamming. <laughs> As I said, uh, it is being brewed over in uh, Aberdeen, Scotland, and uh, comes in at a pretty uh, chilled four and a half fucking percent. But uh, let's just see how she bloody tastes. Let's drink a beer. Let's drink it. Here, we'll certainly got the colour of uh, those berries mentioned. Certainly smells very fucking berry. A uh, bloody cheers. That's a refreshing fucking sour ale. Very nice. Yeah, raspberries, blackberry, that kind of thing. Not super sour, not uh, puckery, I wouldn't say. Just a little tart, but uh, pretty fucking uh, crisp and dry. We've got a real refreshing sort of vibe to this one. Yeah, clean and crisp, and uh, I can get sort of a, a black currant as well as the raspberry and blackberry, or maybe those two are kind of combining to make a little bit of a, a black currant flavour. Reminds me a little bit of uh, Ribena. Nice and effervescent, as I said, crisp, dry, and refreshing, and uh, a real tasty fucking berry flavour. Let's pair it up with a fucking liquid. Well, given our very berry beer, I've selected a new berry flavored liquid that I got from Dark Star just recently. It's called Liquid, although they've spelt it L-I-C-K, Liquid. It's a raspberry ripple. Ripe, juicy raspberry syrup swirled into fresh, fluffy vanilla ice cream. This British classic is guaranteed to leave jaws dropping and drooling for more. Oh, I would tend to fucking agree. It's pretty tasty. It's got a, a lovely raspberry flavour to it and a, a creamy vanilliness, which should bring something new to the fucking beer. Fuck, that is good. That is bloody real good. It's lifting more of a, a berry flavour out of the beer, kind of enhancing the berryness of it. And as I'd hoped, a little bit of a, a creamy vanilla vibe over the top of that. That is uh, pretty fucking good, dickheads. Yeah, the aftertaste is super fucking creamy with that uh, juice. The uh, the berries in this beer, really nice and dark, and uh, this fucking liquid just goes perfectly. It's a very, very pairing. But enough waffling over this shit. Let's get down in the up and bloody close. Let's have a good squiz at the old drop and the new drop, and then we'll give you me fucking thoughts. Let's have a sticky beak. 
Okie fucking dokie, dickhead. So I just got sample packaging when I dropped 1.5, so there's no point in showing you the box. But what you'll find inside, I'm assuming, even in the retail packages, will be obviously your drop, your uh, spares bag with grub screws, O-rings, tool, and a squonk pin, uh, instructions, a little how to get $15 voucher via signing up to their social media shit card, and a pair of Clapton coils and some cotton. But let's get into it. So they've kind of kept the overall design shape of the original drop in that they've got a two-tone color scheme. So the originals all came out with sort of uh, either silver and black or gold and black. I think they did gunmetal as well, but they had this sort of two-tone design and they've kind of kept that going, but rather than having a, a different colored base, they've got just a, a different colored uh, ring around the airflow control and a different sort of kind of uh, reload-esque. This reminds me of the original reload RTA from uh, years ago. A little bit different, but uh, kind of similar in that sort of cog kind of uh, grinder sort of design to it. Don't mind it, it looks pretty good. You've got the original drop logo, that hasn't changed, and the airflow, even though the shape is different, it's the same sort of principle. It's a very much a vertical sort of design going up rather than across the RDA. And I think the idea there is to get it to go sort of through between the posts underneath your coil, but also over your coil. Uh, and they've just sort of expanded that in terms of the uh, the width. I don't know whether there's a whole lot more airflow though, uh, compared to the original. This one has a very smooth feel to it, which the original had too, but I think maybe the airflow is slightly smoother just to the shape of the holes. I think the overall uh, airflow is maybe a fraction more, but not by much, just a little bit. They've also put the honeycomb on the inside of the control rather than the outside. So you've got these sort of slits here and uh, they're all honeycombed at wide open setting. You can then adjust that by closing off the top row, the second row, the third row, and the third row opens up the bottom to a slit rather than little holes. And this is still quite restricted, even though it gets rid of the, uh, the little tiny sieve type holes. It's pretty restricted, but it's not too bad if you like a fairly tight uh, lung drawer. And then you can close that off if you wanted to. Or you could run it like this, where you're closing off part of each row. Um, and uh, doing it that way. So quite a bit of versatility on that airflow control and it is a, a nice sort of smooth rotation. The tolerances on this, I gotta say, are pretty fucking nice. Let's uh, work our way from the top down though. We've got an 810 size drip tip, same as the original O-ring is on the inside there. So I've been able to use my custom drip tips without any worry. It's a fairly tall stock drip tip, I will say this one. Uh, a bit of height on that one compared to a lot of others we're getting these days. Logo on both sides, which uh, they didn't have on the original. They just had it on one side. So they have uh, double logoed this one. It's still 24 millimeters in diameter, so no change there. Usual branding on the bottom. And uh, like the first one, a hybrid safe 510 pin. What I mean by hybrid safe is you've got a protruding gold portion or pin from the stainless steel threads, which means that you can use it on a hybrid mechanical mod. If your uh, drop 1.5 or any other atomizer for that matter doesn't have a protruding pin, don't use it on a hybrid mech mod and never ever ever use a fucking sub tank on a hybrid mech. So we'll take the uh, cap off and they do have a, a similar sort of tab system to the first one. So you've got this sort of tab that's uh, popping up and lines up with the top cap there. So you've only got one position to put, well two I suppose if you flip it like that, but you've really got one fixed position for the airflow. It stays central to the deck. There's the inside. You've got a nice dome shape to it. As you can see, the airflow holes there, and then we have the deck. So no change at all from what I can see on the deck. They've got the same height on the posts. You've got uh, flathead grub screws coming in from the side there, and uh, you put your coil legs through and they will poke out from the base of those holes and you can snip them in there if you wanted to or you can just cut your coils relatively close to where you need them to be, poke them through, 
and you don't have to worry about trimming them as long as they're not uh, obstructing your fucking uh, height on your coils. So makes it pretty easy to install. You don't really need to cut your coils super accurately. You can cut them a little longer than what you need and then the excess just hangs through. But if you really want to, you can kind of get in there and, and cut them off, though it, it's a bit of a pain still and I don't really see the fucking point. So uh, if you want to see how I built and installed the coils on mine, I'll show you the build I've got in a second. Uh, you can check out the uh, live build stream I actually did with uh, Mr. Grim Green. There's a link in the description. We were doing a, a live build session together and we both built our, uh, our Drop 1.5s. You can see how we both set them up and uh, wicked them. So link in the description to that, but it's exactly the same way you built and wicked the original. You got a pretty nice uh, juice well like the first one you're looking at 5.2 millimeters in depth which is pretty good it's going to hold a reasonable amount of liquid but also your coils are up quite high so your uh, wicks end up being quite long so there's a fair bit of cotton to hold juice as well as the well if you really wanted to you could put the original top cap on the new deck but I don't really see the point in that because the decks are exactly the same. You're not really getting any difference in terms of uh, how it fucking functions but just if there is anybody out there they want to know are they cross compatible yes they fucking are so these are the coils that i've been using in mine uh, they are from uh, ohm chaser coils over in new zealand uh, they are some stainless steel aliens uh, 316 stainless steel. I'm not sure whether they are all stainless steel or whether there is a, uh, a core of uh, something else, but uh, they're fused Claptons. Uh, I think I said aliens before, but they're fused Claptons. Uh, mine came in at uh, about 0.1 ohms and they are very, very nicely made coils. Even though they look black, uh, that's just stainless steel. It tends to go black pretty quickly, but these coils have actually been holding up very well, and uh, there's not a lot of caramelization on there. They just look like there is because, uh, yeah, stainless steel tends to go black fairly quick, but don't worry, it still tastes great. And uh, these are very, very nicely made coils. As you can see, the, uh, the clamp system works well with flat wire uh, coils like this because you're clamping from the side and you're not going to twist those legs at all. As you may have noticed, there's a little bit of browning on my uh, cotton there. And that's typical for this style of RDA because you've got a lot of cotton down here and no real airflow around the side. This tends to uh, rub up against the uh, top cap and you end up with sort of uh, heat on the cotton and nicotine goes kind of brown when it gets uh, overheated. So you will find that with this style of RDA, you get this sort of browning uh, because the cotton is uh, sitting up against the uh, the top cap a lot of the time. It gets warm, there's not a lot of airflow uh, when it's up against the, uh, the top cap and it ends up uh, going a little brown. But again, nothing to really worry about. As you can see, the length of cotton on those legs is significantly longer than other RDAs. And that's because the coils are raised up quite high. It's a reasonably tall RDA, so uh, you just bear that in mind. But the idea really, from what I can see here, I've got my coils not crazy high up above my post, but with a couple of millimeters above where the holes are. And the idea there for me is to try and get a bit of undercoil airflow. If I put my top cap up against it, you can see that the majority of the airflow is either going straight on to the side of the coil or these two bottom rows are actually below the coil. So it's gonna pass through these two posts and kind of get underneath that coil giving me a bit better flavor performance than if I had my coils lower. So you can play around with the height of your coils and get different uh, sort of flavor performance. But for me, I think this is gonna work the best. And if you uh, bend your coils in a little bit when you drip through the top cap, it'll hit straight onto the coil, saturating the area that dries out the most. And uh, it does function very, very well for uh, just easy dripping straight through the fucking top. And uh, that really is about it for the drop 1.5. So with that dickheads, let's jump back up top, check out the pros, cons, prices, and all the other shit. So there you have it, the fucking drop 1.5. Some nice little uh, changes to the airflow there, but I like that they've kind of kept the original principles of the drop. They haven't deviated too far away from it. I guess it's why it's called a 1.5. But let's get into the pros and bloody cons. So I definitely like the airflow adjustments, as I mentioned, I think the changes are nice. I think it gives you a little bit different sort of control and maybe just a little bit more smoothness 
to the airflow. It's also wider set the airflow down low. The original one had airflow about the same sort of distance, but it was narrower. And this is a little bit wider down below and maybe helping get that uh, air underneath the coil. I've been liking it with just the top row closed. So most of the air is kind of being forced underneath the coil, I think from the position that my coils are in. So uh, the flavor is very good on this one. Maybe, uh, I think I think a little bit better than the original. Probably comes down to that airflow control and the fact that I've got the, uh, the top closed off. I think it's a little bit smoother and I think maybe the uh, flavor is just a, a smidgen better. Really pretty fucking good for something that is essentially side airflow, not an undercoil airflow RDA. I don't mind the look of this one. I think uh, the subtle changes to the uh, outside design are kind of nice. Not everybody's going to like the two-tone effect, but I have seen they do a bunch of just straight colors. So you can go all black, all silver, all gold, or all blue. And then they have a variety of mix and match uh, top and bottom colors. So uh, yeah, I think overall it's a pretty nice looking RDA. Like the first one, building it is very straightforward. So I'll give it a pro once again for ease of use. Installing the coils, very fucking easy. You just pre-cut them quite loosely, don't have to go too accurately and drop them in, and then any excess sort of just pokes through and I didn't even really bother about trimming them once they were in there, I just gave them sort of a, a rough cut before I dropped them in there. No twisting of the coil legs. Wicking, again, very easy, just make sure you've left plenty of wick, cut them uh, fairly long. If you want to see how I did it, as I mentioned earlier, there is a uh, link in the description. You can see myself and Mr. Nicholas Grim Green setting ours up. Uh, it's, it's very easy, like the first one, really no different in terms of building it and uh, wicking it. Loads of fucking clouds as well. Like the first one, you can put plenty big coils in there. No issues with uh, large builds, hot builds or anything like that. It's fairly versatile. If you're into chasing clouds, but you also like flavor, this is gonna give you uh, a good array of both. Build quality is decent as well. Tolerances are all pretty nice. Machining is all good on it as well. Uh, not everyone's gonna be a fan of the gold plated posts. Sometimes that has a tendency to flake off these sorts of RDAs. Maybe it would have been nice if they changed it up from the original to a, a non gold plated post but uh, hey I think overall they've done a pretty good job of uh, fit and finish. Overall I think it's a very good performing side airflow RDA. Some of the best flavor you're going to get from something that doesn't have undercoil airflow and therefore isn't prone to leaking. So what do I have to fucking complain about? Not a whole lot really here. It's uh, a nice sort of subtle change to the original on the airflow and on the looks department. That's probably really my only complaint. I like what they've done with the top cap shape. I don't like the big drop logos on both sides. The original just had it on one, they've doubled up now and they've got two. I think they should have gone the other way. They should have stripped it off and put no fucking logos on here. The fact that it's a laser etched logo as well, it's a lot more obvious on the black than it is if it would be a proper engraving blacked out. I think they should have just gone clean. I think it would have looked really fucking nice with uh, no uh, laser etched drop on the side there, but it's not really a big deal. A lot of people that won't fucking bother, but it just gives it a little bit more of a, a cheaper look rather than uh, a nice, clean, minimal look. I think we're kind of going in that direction a little bit in a lot of uh, products these days. Would have been nice if they got rid of the uh, the drop on there. But apart from that, I don't really have a lot of uh, fucking complaints. Um, maybe those that like lots of airflow would want a little bit more. It doesn't have just oodles of airflow, even when it's wide open. I like it with either the top row closed or it wide open, but for those that want heaps of airflow, maybe something else is gonna give it to you. Other than that, I can't really see a lot of things wrong with this one. Uh, as I said, maybe that gold plated uh, deck there is a little bit outdated, but Overall, I think they've done a good job of uh, creating a, a 1.5 version of an already very popular fucking RDA from a few years back. So what's it gonna set you back? Well, I can't put prices or links in the description thanks to YouTube policies, but if you do a bit of a Google, I've seen it going for 35 bucks US. So a very affordable product, kind of in line with uh, what it was originally and what you're looking at for other RDAs in its class. So uh, not fucking bad at all. I think that about fucking does it for me though. Uh, again, a Nice fucking side airflow RDA, some of the best airflow you're gonna get from something that doesn't have undercoil airflow. Easy to build, easy to wick, drip through the top. You can just sub on your dick off and uh, have a good time. 
So that'll fucking do me, cunts. I'll put the usual Instagram and Facebook links down in the description if you want to see what this Muppet gets up to outside of the YouTube videos. If you want to support my channel, please do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button, share the video around. They always help me out. But if you really want to keep me behind this lens, then think about hitting some of my support links. As I say every video, I don't take payments for making reviews. There's no sponsorships from vape companies or even a sneaky jumping the queue fee. I want to make sure that you're getting a truly unbiased opinion on these products. But to keep that up, a bit of public support is how I pay the bills. So hit my Patreon page. There's special content and a vlog on there each week you won't see here on YouTube, as well as all the extra gear that I get. I've got a spare 1.5 drop and a, uh, a drop solo. I'll be giving away to my fucking supporters at the end of this month because they're the dickheads that keep me doing my thing honestly. But if you can't, that's all good. Sit back, sub home your fucking dicks off or your bloody tits off. I couldn't give a shit what you're vaping on, whether it's the original drop, the drop 1.5, the solo, the drop dead. As long as you're not banging the bloody bungers, that's all that fucking matters. Cheers for tuning in. Cheery fucking oh. Got a new RDA, well a retake. <laughs> Got a new RDA from an old, what? Got an RDA, a re, that, what am I gonna fucking say? Got a new RDA for, oh, what? G'day you bloody dickheads, vaping bogan, back in. I like the fact they've kind of kimp, kimped, kind of kimped, kind of kimped. So there you go dickheads, the drop, uh, oh, oh, fucking hell.